All right, I got a pretty wild uh, update here. Um, since we're so close to the uh, possible trib start date of November 8th or somewhere in that range, um, check out what came out in the news today. Netanyahu offers the Palestinians a state within temporary borders. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is making efforts to convince the Obama administration to accept a plan by which the Palestinian state would be established within temporary borders for a period of 10 years. Uh, so we're starting to see a time frame put on this possible covenant agreement. Um, we know from Daniel 9.27 that that, uh, that covenant is going to be seven years. Daniel 9.27 says that he shall confirm a covenant for one week. Uh, a week in those passages is uh, also translated as sevens. So if it were one seven, um, that could also be interpreted as seven years. Uh, sounds a little funny, but that's what Bible scholars agree on. That same quote that says that they would try to establish a Palestinian state within 10 years uh, continues saying that they would leave the difficult issues such as refugees and Jerusalem to be decided in future negotiations. Uh, now what's funny about that is that you know they may be able to uh, divide the land and you know uh, start carving out a Palestinian state out of it but to negotiate Jerusalem um, that's <laughs> that's going to be much more difficult uh, Zechariah 12 uh, let's see 2 and 3 behold I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem and it shall be in, it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. So, uh, according to the Bible, the entire world may come against trying to divide Jerusalem or even, you know, possibly capture Jerusalem in the middle of the tribulation, things like that. Uh, but it says that all nations that try to heave it away or give it away uh, will be cut to pieces. So, um, unfortunately, America is one of those nations. Later in the article, uh, it says that the Palestinian source said that what Netanyahu proposed is a gradual solution uh, that will continue for more than 10 years. Uh, it will leave Jerusalem and the bigger settlements in the West Bank under Israeli control. Uh, and they will lease Israel the Jordan Valley for 40 years and will leave Israeli army bases at the entrances of Palestinian cities. Um, the idea of this lease is uh, rather interesting. I've got another article on that. Um, now a lease, uh, you know, it says that they will lease Israel the Jordan Valley. What that implies is that the Palestinians actually own that territory or would own that territory and by a lease um, Israel would, I guess, uh, you know, a lease is kind of like they would actually rent it. Uh, you know, like say you lease a car, you don't actually own the car, you're actually, you know, renting it or borrowing it for a long period of time. Now the thing about a lease is that it implies that the Palestinians own the land, and another thing about a lease is that leases expire. So, um... You know, this article has put forth a uh, possible time period of 10 years, but take a look at this other article here. This article details it a little better. It says, Israel may lease East Jerusalem from a Palestinian state. The, uh, the opening line in this uh, article is kind of silly. It says, uh, you know, uh, Israel is discussing future borders. One option is leasing the land from the Palestinians for up to 99 years. I don't know why they'd put such a large number out there. Uh, later later down it says, uh, Israel would lease the land in East Jerusalem from the Palestinian state for 40 to 99 years. But now you get down to this most important quote here. Uh, this source, the Ashark al Aswat, whatever it is, um, also reported that Israel and the Palestinians discussed the option of leasing the land in talks in 2001, but they discussed leasing for six 
to nine years, not 99 years. Um, I've already mentioned it. What's an important time frame that's somewhere between six and nine years? It ain't eight. <laughs> it is not eight. Uh, so this is actually narrowing down the agreement to quite possibly, I mean, we know it's going to be seven years, but they're starting to hint at it. They're starting to, uh, we're starting to see the details come together in the news. Um, you know, I realize this is from, you know, talks in 2001, but that's already been established. And, I mean, we just know from Bible prophecy that it's going to turn out to be seven years. Now, here's something else interesting I wanted to show you. Um, I put up a uh, an interview of uh, King Abdullah from uh, Jordan with John Stewart from The Daily Show. I can't put up the video because it's, uh, you know big copyright, whatever, um, but I'll put up the audio from it. It's just a small clip, but listen to what he mentions. There's something called the Arab Peace Proposal, which has been around for seven or eight years, um, which is signed by all the Muslim countries, including Iran, uh, that says that if you give the Palestinians their future, then we want to all normalize with you. Now, whether the Iranians actually um, believe it or not, they're actually signatories to, to that. So I think it's funny that uh, Jordan's King Abdullah mentioned the Arab Peace Initiative. I think he called called it the Arab Peace Proposal. Uh, here's what Wikipedia says about it. It says that it's a comprehensive peace initiative first proposed in 2002 uh, at a summit of the Arab League um, presented by uh, King Abdullah from Saudi Arabia. Uh, it was re reendorsed again at a summit in 2007. Um, in an attempt to end the uh, Arab-Israeli conflict, uh, it would mean normalizing relations between the entire Arab region and Israel in exchange for a complete withdrawal from the occupied territory, territories, including East Jerusalem, and a just settlement of the Palestinian refugee crisis. Um, you know, talking about uh, having like a right of return for the, uh, the so-called refugees to, to move back into this land. All right, so now uh, now that you know a little bit about what the Arab peace uh, proposal is, here's an article. A think tank from Israel uh, backs the conditional acceptance of an Arab peace plan. Uh, it's from the IDC, which is the Interdisciplinary Center, um, and it says that it's given its conditional support of the Arab peace initiative. Uh, according to a report released by this think tank, uh, let's see, Israel's security, economy, and international standing would improve if uh, Netanyahu's government declared that it accepts this Arab peace plan, the same one that Jordan's king mentioned. Uh, with the following five reservations, uh, the Palestinian state would have to be demilitarized. Palestinian refugees uh, could only return to the Palestinian state. Uh, a small number would be allowed to live in Israel, uh, you know, a small number of Palestinians. Uh, terror against Israel would be halted immediately, and terrorist in infrastructure would be dismantled. Uh, security arrangements would be made, and the large settlement blocks would be preserved as part of a land swap. The, uh, the head author of this report from the, uh, uh, this IDC think tank uh, says that, you know, as a, as a solution to the Iranian problem, it says to counter the Iranian threat, there is common ground among the Gulf states, uh, the Egyptians, the Palestinian Authority, and Israel, and the basis for establishing this alliance is the Arab peace plan. Um, like Jordan's King said, uh, this Arab peace proposal is already signed, and uh, Iran is one of the signatories. Um, and what that says is that, you know, upon the condition, or sorry, upon the creation of a Palestinian state, uh, all these Arab countries would normalize their ties with Israel. But of course, we know they're only saying that. They're not actually going to do it. Uh, we know from, uh, you know, Psalm 83, Isaiah 17, and uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 that, uh, the Arabs will definitely not normalize any relations with Israel. This is all a, you know, scam to get them to reduce their size. They're they're even easier to conquer, 
And, uh, the article ends by saying the initiative has been sadly neglected despite the fact that it has come to provide what Israel has been seeking, an end to the conflict, acceptance in the region, and security. Uh, and they say that I think this is an extraordinary step. Um, now this think tank, this think tank endorses it. Uh, they said that they had computerized models with, you know, five other possible solutions. Um, apparently, the Palestinians endorse it. Uh, that was in the um, that was in a different uh, that was in the Wikipedia article. Uh, Jordan's king endorses it. Uh, the Saudi king is the one who initiated it at the Arab League. So uh, most of the Arab world has already accepted this. It's quite possible that this could be the covenant. I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying uh, it's it's already been presented. Uh, the Palestinians said in the Wikipedia article that they wanted the United States to convince Israel to accept the Arab peace plan. So uh, keep an eye out for news on this thing. And uh, it's interesting, this might actually be the covenant that's on the table. Uh, in closing, uh, pretty much everything that you've seen in this video was predicted in the Bible, uh, in you know the major and minor prophets uh, in the end of the Old Testament. Uh, some of these prophecies are hundreds of years older than Jesus Christ. So uh, we're talking 2,000 plus years here, uh, things that were written down, um, not only by just one person, but by several people. And uh, these things all... Uh, <laughs> they all agree, you know. Um, what the Bible also says is that without having Jesus as your personal Savior, without being a born-again believer, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Um, we're living in a generation where everybody thinks that, uh, you know, their truth is relative. You know, what may be true for me isn't true for you, you know. So if I say that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life... Maybe that gets me to heaven. But for you, you know, maybe it's, oh, well, I'm a good person. Well, the Bible uh, is the ultimate authority on this. And seeing as how it's already proven itself through prophecy that it's true, uh, what it says about salvation is also true. Nobody is good enough to go to heaven on their own. We're all sinners deserving death. And Jesus came and died on the cross in your place. You should have been the one hanging on that cross. You should have been whipped and beaten and... Uh, even carried that big uh, piece of wood up that sidewalk. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't, you know, just a 200-yard walk. It was quite a ways. Um, that should have been you. That should have been you in his place. Uh, and to think of taking nails through your hands and your feet, uh, you really need to imagine that for a second if you haven't done it before. Jesus came and took your place. Now, it's a free gift of salvation. You don't have to accept it. <laughs> so you can very well stay here during the tribulation and uh, try and ride it out if you want. But I wouldn't recommend it. Um, how inconvenient. <laughs> um, it figures Satan would send a text to me from CNN while I'm trying to present the gospel here. <laughs> um, but yeah, bottom line, if you don't have Jesus as your personal Savior, if you don't trust Him for salvation and turn away from the things that aren't pleasing to Him, you know, we're never going to be perfect. We're, we're saved by grace through faith and not of our works. Uh, but we do need to repent and turn away from the things that uh, are sin. So, quit playing around, I'm telling you. Uh, one, one day everything's going to change very quickly. And if you neglect this salvation you're going to regret it for a long time. Uh, the Bible talks about weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, that's not just the people in hell, but that's going to be the people on earth that miss the rapture. So, don't be that person. Get right or get left.